It was 1933. I said to Abdullah, in the month of October, late October, but now I have a hungry desire, a haunting desire, to go to Barbados. Now the thing stops me, but the lack of money, I have no money. I learned so many things from the old fellow. And, and here was a man, truly of the spirit. But if I judge from appearances, I would say, well, he can't be a holy man. He said to me, you are in Barbados. I said, I'm in Barbados? He said, yes, you are now in Barbados. And so, you see Barbados, and you see America from Barbados, and you can smell the tropical land of Barbados, see only the little homes of Barbados, and that's all you do. You just simply sleep this night in Barbados. Well, I thought him insane, really. I mean, at the moment, it seemed so stupid. Well, nevertheless, that night, I slept in Barbados. I assumed that I'm in Barbados, in my mother's home. And then I saw America relative to Barbados, and it wasn't under me that night, it was north of me about 2,000 miles. Well, the next day, I didn't tell him anything, but a week later, when nothing happened, I thought I would approach him. This time, we've moved into November. I said, you know, Ab, there is no, uh, not a thing has happened. He wouldn't discuss it with me. He turned his back on me and went into his little library and slammed the door. About three times I tried to open up the discussion with my friend Al between that moment when I first talked to him and the end. He would never discuss it. On the basis, how can he discuss with me how I am going to Barbados when I am already in Barbados? That's stupid to discuss how I'm going to go when I am in Barbados. And if I am faithful to my assumption, I can't discuss the how. I am already there. Well, this went on. On the morning of the fourth day of December, there's no job, no place to go, and the last boat that will get me there, my Christmas, is going to sail on the 6th. Under my door is a little letter from my brother Victor. And he said, as a family, we were never around the table at Christmas together. So in the letter, he justifies why he's asked me to come. He said, I know you don't have a job, and there's no excuse for not coming. And so I'm enclosing a draft for $50. You may need a shirt, a pair of shoes, socks or something. And I've notified the furnace witty line that you will come for a ticket. So the ticket is waiting for you at the furnace line. Well, I was so excited, I rushed on down to the furnace line. And I told, gave them my letter. They said, yes, we have uh, a message here from your family in, uh, in Barbados. We'll give you a ticket, but we haven't any first class tickets left. You can go you can go third class and use the facilities of the first but you have to sleep third class I rushed right up to Abdullah and I said Ab I got my ticket for Barbados but I have to go third class I am all elated and happy about it he said who told you that you're going to Barbados and who told you that you went to Barbados third class you went to Barbados and you went first class would say no more he isn't even happy that I'm going to Barbados now so I went down on the morning of the 6th day of December with my third class ticket. Went up to the desk as they're checking in the passages and I put my ticket forward. He said, I've got good news for you, Mr. Goddard. Someone is cancelled and you're going first class. So all that I did, I tried to the best of my ability with his, I would call almost insolence. He was rude. But he taught me by his rudeness that I cannot discuss how if I am doing what I'm supposed to do. He tells me right away, you are in Barbados. Like someone comes to you now, and you will apply this principle towards their request, and they say, oh, I would love to be happily married. And you say to her or him, you are now happily married. They look at you as though you're insane. But that's exactly what you're supposed to do. You are now happily married. He wouldn't give me any encouragement if I did what he told me to do. But we all are human enough to want another little discussion, another little push. And so he taught me the lesson that there is no such thing as a little pregnancy. No such thing. If you did it, then you're pregnant. Let the child grow. And interference with it is going to be a miscarriage. Now, don't try to argue. You are conceived. And all you have to do is to be a faithful mother and bear that child. And don't discuss it with me anymore.